Sight reading is one of the most important skills you can have as a piano player, mainly because you can learn piano pieces much, much faster. Well, today uh, we're talking about sight reading. I'm going to give you some tips on how to sight read the best way, how to develop your sight reading, and I'm also going to give you some awesome resources so you can practice sight reading daily like you're supposed to. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is what is sight reading. Sight reading is playing through a piece of music for the first time. You want to play through the example ideally from beginning to end without stopping, at least completely. So really if you mess some notes up, but so long as you can continue going from beginning to end, that's what you want to shoot for. You do kind of want to aim for accuracy notes, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. Let's get on to our next topic. Okay, tip number one on sight reading itself is sight read every day. That is the most, most important thing uh, that you can do, which is I'm going to give you some resources here at the end of the lesson so you can do just that. It'll keep you busy sight reading for quite some time. So you want to be sight reading every single day. I would make it a part of your regular practice routine. As soon as you sit down, maybe you want to do a scale, arpeggi some arpeggios, and then go right to sight reading. And you want to make sure you fit that in before you start your regular you know, pieces that you are working on. And why I recommend you place it there in your practice is the further along in your practice you put it, the more likely you're going to forget about it. You want to make sure you get it in, and you want to do it how often? Every single day, or every time you practice at least. If you only get five days in of practicing, then get in all five days. Consistency is key. Let's go on to tip number two. Tip number two, sight read something that is a little bit below your current playing level. If you're really new to learning piano with both hands, you might want to try playing it hand separate first. So if you are used to playing something like Moonlight Sonata, you don't want to sight read something at the same level as Moonlight Sonata if that's like the most recent piece that you are learning that's probably at the top of your level. You probably, if you're playing Moonlight Sonata, the first movement anyway, you probably want to be sight reading something that you'd be learning closer to when you first started playing piano lessons like Jingle Bells. And uh, maybe some easier Christmas music would do well. Uh, you know, nursery rhymes, itsy bitsy spider, things like that. Remember, the goal is not to sight read something extremely complicated, but to sight read something that you are able to play. You're able to process the right hand and the left hand. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you an order on what you should be focusing on here a little bit later on the lesson, so we'll look out for that. So remember, tip number two is that you want to be sight reading something a little bit below your level. It can be way below your level if you find it too easy and you can play through it really, really quickly without even thinking about it, then it's not really doing you any good. You wanna bump up the level, but you wanna start on the low end when it comes to sight reading difficulty. Okay, tip number three is slow down and focus on getting the right notes. You don't want to be playing too quickly. Remember, it's all about being able to process the notes from beginning to end. If you're playing too quickly, chances are it's going to fall apart on you and you don't want that. Remember that when you're sight reading, the easiest part is usually at the beginning, not always, but uh, so chances are that even if you could play the first part fast, once you get to like the middle part, if you're playing through or sight reading through a whole song, it's going to get tougher and it's going to change. So you want to find a manageable speed and tempo that you can start with very slowly uh, from beginning to the end. Okay, tip number four is a lot of them all in one. I'm just going to give you the order of what you want to focus on. You want to first focus on notes, getting the right notes, beginning and then second is the correct rhythms. So generally you want to focus on the notes and the rhythms and getting those correct as much as possible. The additional things like articulations, dynamics, and the little smaller details aren't that important at first. Now, if, you're, if you start to develop your sight reading, start to get really good, then you will actually be able to handle both the notes and the little details like the dynamics at the same time. But that is the order 
in which you want to go. You want to go notes, rhythms, then all the other smaller things like articulations, dynamics, and little, little details like that. Okay, so site reading resource number one. Now it's time to talk about where do you find these site reading examples. Well, obviously you could pick up a piano book that you've never seen before. Remember, the whole goal of site reading is that you've never seen the piece before ever. So you can either do that or you can do one of these other things. So uh, site reading resource number one is belmont.edu. Let me show you what this is all about. I'll include a link to exactly where this is in the description of this video. So uh, going down here, you, as you can see, there's easy examples and then there's three levels of intermediate, three levels of advanced. This will keep you busy sight reading for quite some time. Obviously, if you're just starting out, you wanna start out with the easy examples and there are a ton of them, but as you can see, because they're easy, they're very simple. Uh, let me show you on the piano here. So as you can see, very simple. Right hand and left hand are doing the exact same thing. There's only like one flat really to look out for. And very simple rhythms. Although it is harder when you're trying to talk and uh, teach and do all of it at the same time. So once again, applying everything I know to these sight reading examples, I'm gonna go a little bit on the slower side. I'm gonna focus on notes first. The other details second as you can see because this is on the easier side they only have really the notes to worry about i mean the rhythms are so simple it's uh not that bad and then the smaller details aren't even written in so this is a perfect example of what you wanted to start on okay let's take a quick look at the intermediate so i can just kind of show you how it builds up between each one so this one as you can see from the first example here that let me get that in there good. So from the first example here is that now we have simple rhythms, but we also have rests and we have ties. So it's slowly adding a little bit more difficulty in there. Uh, and as you can scroll down, you can see that they get a little bit more difficult for each one. This one we have you know, actual accidentals in there, sharps and flats and things uh, like that. Where, and then we get into the point where the light, right hand and left hand are starting to do different things. So I highly, highly recommend this resource because it's a great, it gives you a great starting point and it leads you through and helps you develop your sight reading in a like chronological order that makes sense. Okay, I wanna quickly show you the advanced examples over on the belmont.edu. So this is taken from a book here. Scroll down a bit. There's a little bit of a preface here. And as you can see, it's starting to get a bit more complicated. So if this looks like something you would normally play uh, as part of your you know, normal repertoire or something you've learned recently, well, you probably want to learn, you know, you don't want to start here when you're sight reading. Why? Because like I talked about earlier, you want to sight read something a little bit below your level so you can process the notes Oops. and obviously you'd probably go a little bit slower that if you were new at this so just kind of showing you how it's working you from beginner to more advanced now what if you start to get more advanced than this well let's get to resource number two okay time for sight reading resource number two hymnal i'm going to provide a link in the description although for this one there are a lot of options if you have a church hymnal if you go to church you have a hymnal from there this that'll work for this uh the one i am going to include in the description is from lds.org so you want to check that one out because these seem to be written in a way that's a little bit easier for beginner sight readers so let's get on uh to the example here so as you can see these are fairly simple and what a hymnal is is they are um, songs that they they sing in church but they have really interesting piano parts to them as well to put it in the context of a piano player uh, so the great thing about hymnals they have very simple let me show you on the piano here they have very simple melodies they also have very simple background chords and the way the chords move and the the usage of chords is really commonly used in a lot of other music like classical music 
or even to an extent some modern day music as well but learning how to move between these chords the the ones used in hymnals is always a great idea so once you are finished with the belmont.edu ones then i recommend going on to a hymnal a hymnal is really like for an intermediate sight reader if you're just starting out learning how to sight read a hymnal might not be the best thing uh, for you. You can also find them on Amazon, by the way. Um, they are a little bit harder to read often because the staves are broken up. The right hand and left hand, treble clef, bass clef, are broken up by the lyrics. And depending on how many verses there are, there are going to be five lines of lyrics between each line, which would make them spread apart. And they're a little bit odd to read. So that's why I've given you... Uh, the one I'm going to get included here in the description, because they're a bit closer together. They are easier uh, to process as well. But once you learn these ones, you might even want to go on to a, a real uh, church hymnal that you would, you know, it's a really, really thick book. I actually have one around here somewhere, but I did not find it uh, before the lesson. But uh, you'll know what I'm talking about if you look one up. I thought chord hymnals had chords on both staves. They often do, a real church hymnal. So another uh, another great point here by Rich is that one of the reasons I gave you this one and I found it out was that it's a bit easier um, to process than a, a traditional hymnal. You're correct that a regular hymnal like the one I showed you during our Skype lesson does have chords between both hands and once you finish something like this like this is a hymnal collection i suggest you start with once you finish these then go on to a regular hymnal it's a perfect way to get you up and ready uh, once you are ready to make that next step but you are correct rich uh rich asked him what is the trick that you learned on your own sight read uh, regarding sight reading not something taught to you so Seriously, sight reading wasn't anything. The weird thing about sight reading and the reason that I stress it so much with my students, even my young students, even though I think with a lot of them, I could do a little bit more work with them on sight reading. Uh, the reason I really try to get people into it as early as possible is that I went like the first 22 years of my life without sight reading. I'm dead serious. I learned from piano from the time I was six. I was never expected to sight read uh, until I was in college in music school. And I was a terrible sight reader. Uh, you know, and, and when I was first heard about sight reading, first when I got into college, I had kind of heard about it before, but I was like, really, you can learn a, a piece of music without reading it before. I knew it was possible, but it was like, I just didn't understand how you did it. Um, and then I got into college and the only thing my professor, because my professor was teaching me all these other things with how music works and how to play these difficult pieces. He never really taught me how to sight read. Um, so I did some reading on my own on how to sight read. So a lot of the things that I've shared with you today are things that I've come up with my own, on my own. But let me think about all of all the things I talked about. If there's one thing that's like really unique to myself um, I'm always a big proponent of slowing things down and breaking things up into smaller pieces. I teach my students that regularly because it really, really helps. It really does. A lot of times when we have trouble learning anything in piano, it's because we're looking at the thing in the whole, in its whole, and we're not really breaking it up into pieces to make it more manageable. Um, let me see. Um, Sight reading every day is a good one, but that is something uh, my professor taught me. He said, if you want to get better at sight reading, do it every single day. And I had heard that from my peers as well. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, uh, and I kind of forgot to bring this up tonight. So an additional honorable mention is that you want to be sight reading things in different keys and in different time signatures. That is something I did learn on my own because I was sight reading for a while and they're all like very similar pieces. Like the ones I gave you today even are pretty similar. The church hymnals do change key, uh, which is great. But once you're done sight reading all the things I've given you, then you might want to start sight reading music in different styles, maybe like Spanish songs, uh, Baroque music. Like if you want to sight read through some well-tempered clavier, if you're getting really good at sight reading, uh, so you want to sight read in different styles. I think that is my personal tip. So if you don't know, I have a website called PianoLessonsOnTheWeb.com. Well, what is this about? Well, if you really like the lessons I have here over on my YouTube channel, you're really going to like what you see over there. 
mainly because on this website I have a collection of over 25 courses I've made that have the same style of lessons that you like from the YouTube channel. They're exclusive lessons, so you're not going to find them on YouTube or anywhere else. Uh, but they are organized in a way to really help you learn a certain topic. So you can learn about how to play piano. There's you know five levels of that. Uh, there's also music theory. There's five... I, f I forget there's three music theory levels and then there's like composition and things like that so there's like seven courses in that you can learn how to sight read there's some courses there I think there's only one course in that as of right now ear training improving your rhythm and really anything else I felt that you would really need to become a well-rounded piano player so it's really really helpful in helping you take things to that next level there's courses for beginners intermediate students and advanced students so you really want to check that out and also in addition to the videos unlike the youtube channel you get access to printable sheet music examples real songs to practice assignments online activities and anything else that can really help your learning to create a really really uh above and beyond learning experience for what you can get here over on youtube so remember Piano lessons on the web.com. There's also some great information there on the website where you can learn more. One thing I want to tell you about is that you can buy courses individually or you can buy them in packages and you can get a discount for that. So you can get, you know, the beginner's pack uh, that comes with four courses. I think the intermediate pack comes with eight or nine courses, nine courses. Um, so you're getting a lot of courses for the price. Normally courses are about $30. $29.99 for an individual course so these packs are a great deal to sweeten it even further especially since you're so kind to come to our live stream tonight if you use the code YouTube you can get 15% off any course pack or any individual course and that's good pretty much forever so remember code YouTube pretty easy during checkout and you can get that extra 15% off so go to piano lessons on the web.com today and learn about how it can really help you learn much more about piano and music. Okay, if you like this lesson on how to sight read, but you really don't know much about reading music already, you want to definitely check out this playlist I have for you. And then when I do get a sight reading playlist, I will post that uh, as well. You can also find it in the description. So I want to thank everybody else for coming out again. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, because there are great lessons coming out twice a week. And yeah, that's all I have to say. So thanks everybody for coming out, and I'll talk to you in the next lesson. Thank you so much.